They came from humble beginnings, from all over the country and all walks of life, ordinary people. But through hard work, discipline, and dedication, they became extraordinary. They are pilots, scientists, engineers, doctors. From thousands of applicants, these few were chosen. Through years of training, sleepless nights, and personal sacrifices, they keep flying through triumph and tragedy. Learning from mistakes and accepting the risk, they keep flying. America has won. They do it for the necessity of exploration, for scientific discoveries, for the next generation to ensure that humanity has a path forward. They represent the best of our nation. They are NASA astronauts. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm Vanessa White, director of NASA's Johnson Space Center, and I'd like to welcome all of you here today to Ellington Field for a special announcement of America's newest astronaut candidate class. NASA's Johnson Space Center is the home of our nation's human spaceflight programs. This past November, we celebrated our 60th anniversary here in Houston, a tremendous milestone in the history of the U.S. space program. Johnson has served as the hub for America's astronaut corps, International Space Station mission operations, the Orion and Gateway programs, and a host of future spaceflight developments. Our astronaut corps puts the human in human spaceflight. And every few years, we have the opportunity to add to those select few who get to fly in space. These NASA astronauts will plan, train, and fly missions to the International Space Station and to the moon under Artemis, and eventually on to Mars. And after today, Johnson will be the new home of the individuals we introduced to you. More than 12,000 people applied to be a part of this astronaut class. And it takes a team of people to review applications and make selections. I'd like to thank all of our employees who helped with the selection process. These candidates studied hard, worked hard, applied to be a NASA astronaut and have gone through our extensive selection process. And now, today, 10 people will be named as NASA's newest astronaut candidates. These astronaut candidates will train here in Houston for two years using T-38 jets like the ones behind me and focus on a variety of technical activities to prepare them for missions that will help NASA push the boundaries of exploration and travel. Many of them are still in the process of moving their families to Houston, and our team is excited to welcome them home. At Johnson, our vision is clear. We dare to expand frontiers, we unite with our partners to complete bold missions, and we explore for the benefit of all humanity. Our team plays a pivotal role in enhancing scientific and technological knowledge to benefit all of humankind. We've made many giant leaps throughout the past 60 years, fulfilling President Kennedy's goals of landing a man on the moon. And today, we reach further into the stars as we push forward to the moon and once again, and on to Mars with NASA's newest astronaut candidate class. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to Norm Knight, director of our Flight Operations Directorate. Norm leads a team of employees to facilitate the planning, training, and mission execution for NASA's human space flight missions. He's responsible for flight operations, including NASA astronauts, flight directors, NASA pilots, and aviation assets, as well as real-time mission control center command 
and control, and the world-class training facilities, including our spacecraft mock-ups and the neutral buoyancy lab. Please welcome Norm. Thank you, Vanessa, for the kind introduction, and good morning, everyone. It is a great time to be in the space business, and it is a great day to be at NASA. So I know you are excited to meet the NASA's newest astronaut candidates, so let's, uh, let's bring them out. These are your NASA 2021 astronaut candidates. An Air Force pilot from Divide, Colorado, Nicole Ayers. helicopter test pilot from Guanabo, Puerto Rico, Marcos Berrios. A bioengineer and Team USA track cyclist from Gilbert, Arizona, Christina Birch. A drilling engineer from Wasilla, Alaska, Denise Burnham. A NASA Langley research pilot from DeBerry, Florida, Luke Delaney. A space systems engineer from Chesapeake, Virginia, Andre Douglas. A Navy test pilot from South Windsor, Connecticut, Jack Hathaway. Medical Director at SpaceX from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Anil Menon. A physicist from Potomac, Maryland, Christopher Williams. and a Navy test pilot from Clovis, California, Jessica Whitner. Congratulations to the 2021 NASA astronaut candidates. We welcome you to the NASA family and look forward to seeing you train and fly as NASA astronauts. Let's give them a big round of applause. Vanessa, I'll turn it back to you. Okay. Thank you, Norm, and congratulations to all of our astronaut candidates. Now I'd like to introduce the administrator of NASA, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, who is leading our agency into the future. Senator Nelson has served in public office for over four decades, first in the state legislature and in Congress, then as state treasurer, he was elected three times to the United States Senate, representing Florida for 18 years. In 1986, Senator Nelson flew on the 24th flight of the space shuttle. The mission on Columbia orbited the Earth 98 times over six days. Senator Nelson conducted 12 medical experiments, including the first American stress test in space and a cancer research experiment sponsored by the university researchers. I introduce to you, Administrator Nelson.
good morning. Uh, they're not enthusiastic at all, are they? <laughs> well, this is the NASA family. So I address you, members of the national family, and those of you out there watching this on NASA TV, and our distinguished guest here. For 60 years, the Johnson Space Center has captured the American story. It's a story about discovery, about exploration, about people who forge ahead. We are a nation that is restless unless pressing out into the unknown. We've always had a frontier to expand. The frontier now is upwards and it's out into the cosmos. We're going back to the moon and we're continuing on to Mars. And so today we welcome 10 new explorers, 10 members of the Artemis generation. It was the Apollo generation and that did so much for so many. Now it's the Artemis generation. Alone, each of these candidates certainly has the right stuff, but together they represent exactly the creed of our country, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. In this class of candidates is the son of two immigrant parents. There are members and veterans of the U.S. Armed Forces, including a pilot who led the first all-female F-22 formation in combat. One. One candidate led on-site operations on drilling rigs in Canada and Ohio and Texas. And another is a former emergency medical technician and firefighter who became an assistant professor of medicine at Harvard. The class even includes a U.S. track cycling team member. NASA astronauts embody the spirit of the American character, but each astronaut's candidate's journey is different. And that's the power of NASA. We unite people to explore, to discover, to dream. To the candidates, You've been selected not only to push the envelope of humanity's potential, you've been tasked to carry out the hopes of a nation. And that hope is found in the twinkling eyes of a child when they dream of soaring upwards. It's felt whenever we, you know, the Lord is speaking. Oh, Lord, just let me do my part. <laughs> that hope is found in those twinkling eyes of a child. It's felt whenever we gaze up at the stars and wonder what might more be out there. It's what we're going to do when we look through that telescope that we're launching on December the 22nd. Generations of astronaut candidates have trained here at Ellington Field. Many have explored the heavens, and they carried America's aspirations during every mission. And it's a sacred duty. It now belongs to you. So good luck in your training, and, and may God bless you. Now. It's my honor to introduce a couple of more explorers. And is that the siren going off from lightning? Uh, probably. 
NASA is venturing farther out into the solar system, but America is not going alone. We are partnering with space agencies from around the world. Today, we are joined by two United Arab Emirates crew members, Nora, Nora al Matrushi and Mohammed al Mula. Over the next two years, they will train with this class of candidates and they will strengthen the bond between our two nations. Thank you, Nora and Mohammed. Where are they? We are also honored uh, to be joined today by some special guests. Please help me welcome the following elected uh, individuals. Congressman Brian Babin. <laughs> Congressman Randy Weber. That introduction just cost you $5 billion more for the NASA budget. <laughs> Texas State Senator Larry Taylor. <laughs> and Texas State Representative Dennis Paul. Thank you for the bipartisan support from the staff of the offices of Senator Cruz, Congresswoman uh, Sheila Jackson Lee, who texts me as to why she could not be here. She's right there when it comes to NASA. Congressman Babin's staff, Congressman Weber's staff, Congresswoman uh, Garcia's staff, and Congresswoman Fletcher's staff. Next, uh, Congressman Babin of Texas, uh, he's the 36th district, that's right here in this area. Uh, he's going to say a few words. Congressman. Thank you, Administrator. Repeat after me. I do solemnly I do swear, solemn swear we're going to get you plenty of money. <laughs> the Administrator and I have had several conversations about uh, getting funding for our human space exploration and our programs. And uh, This should be a bipartisan effort, and I promise you that it, we are working as hard as we can to do that. Uh, it's my pleasure and my privilege to be here this morning. It's so incredibly proud to be standing here with uh, with you uh, wonderful folks and celebrate our newest class of NASA astronauts. What a time it is for you to be joining the astronaut corps. And these uh, young uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen have been chosen literally from a cast of thousands. And uh, we're very proud of you. Once again, we're launching American astronauts on American uh, rockets from American soil. And before long, we will be, wa we will be watching uh, the most powerful launch vehicle ever known, the Space Launch System, and the Orion, the only spacecraft in the world capable of exploring deep space, clear the tower, and hopefully you will be along for the ride. As astronaut candidates, I have no doubt that you will throw yourself into your training and preparation for that day in the not-so-distant future and when you are asked to carry out the goals of our great nation. In Congress, I serve as the ranking member of the House Space and Aeronautics Subcommittee, and I represent the Johnson Space Center as, as, as a, a, a matter of, of, of fact. Uh, you have my solemn promise that I will do everything possible and in my power to ensure a robust space program that will be standing behind you the entire way. When it comes to space, my absolute highest priority is ensuring that America will continue to lead, to discover, and to achieve. Thank you, Lord. He, he agrees with me. I have great faith that you 
will enable us to do just that. Famed Antarctic explorer Ernest Shackleton once said, it is in our nature to explore, to reach out into the unknown. The only true failure would be to not explore at all. And wearing the American flag on your shoulder and your sleeve, you carry the hopes and dreams of our nation with you into that unknown. And so thank you for your willingness to explore. Congratulations on your selection, and I look forward to seeing great things from you. So, Mr. Administrator, thank you very much. So I want to introduce Congressman Weber of Texas 14th Congressional District. Congressman. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. It is indeed a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the, those introductions. As regarding the $5 billion, you have my commitment. Uh, Brian can handle most of that. I'll kick in a little money myself from time to time. Listen, it's a great pleasure to be here. We live in the greatest country in the world, Texas. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Seriously, we do. We live in the greatest country in the world, the United States of America, and I know you all know that because you're here and you're part of it. Uh, NASA is the epitome, in my opinion, and Johnson Space Center too, of what the finest we have to offer is. Can I get a witness? Come on, y'all. I'm going to pass a hat a little later on, so i got to get y'all geared up. So. Uh, JSC is helping lead that way. Uh, Director Vanessa White reminded us, by the way, of JFK's focus. Remember in 62 when he said, we choose to, we're going to put a man on the moon? How many of y'all remember that? Some of y'all are old like I am. You remember that. Well, what if he said we choose to put a woman on the moon? We'd have been a lot farther ahead at this point, right? We'd probably be at Mars already. Right, Director? <laughs> Administrator? <laughs> Well, NASA and JSC's record speaks for itself. I don't have to tell y'all. Y'all absolutely know that. That's why you're hearing such a great show of support. Their ability to focus and make goals, if you can pardon the, make their goals, if you can pardon the pun, is out of this world. They're good at it, aren't they? Come on, y'all. And speaking of the finest that America has to offer, this new group of astronaut candidates gives me a great deal of encouragement. You know, I remember Reed, we were talking in the back, and he said that he has never seen so much excitement in the country as there is right now. And I say, amen. I coined a phrase that's called togetherism, NASA's togetherism. We're bringing people, groups, countries, we're bringing goals together, we're helping STEM, we're helping young people to get excited. You're seeing togetherism. I'm 68 years old. I know I don't look that old, more like 78. But anyway, you're seeing young people get excited like you've never, I've never seen before. So that's exciting. That gives me encouragement. Are y'all encouraged? So. So why, why is that important? I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that as America goes, the world goes. And I don't say that lightly. For us to lead in space is absolutely paramount. And what we do, what we ha where we're headed, is what is gonna how, it's gonna be how the world perceives us. How the world perceives us. NASA actually helps bring us together, not just that togetherism here, but around the world. And we see it. We've got a couple of astronauts from across the big pond right there. We see that. This is help. This space, our space goals helps. Y'all hear the rain? Notice that I didn't get no lightning. God wanted y'all to hear what I have to say. I I'm just saying that for my friends. So it helps us with national defense. It helps us with our economy. It helps us with STEM. It helps in so many ways. So hats off to NASA. Hats off to Administrator Nelson, Director Weich, and the whole NASA team. And let, well, give, give them a hand. I do want to fix one thing Miss Vanessa said. She said the families are moving to Houston. Just so you all know, you know, I'm, I'm the congressman from Galveston County. We are taking applications in Galveston County, families, just, just so they know, Norm. Seriously, we couldn't be more prouder. We couldn't be more prouder of y'all. 
uh, and just an unbelievable day. Congratulations, hats off, good job, well done. We're looking for the best to come. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. Now it's my privilege to introduce a role model for all astronauts. In fact, she was just inducted into the Astronaut Hall of Fame. Pam Melroy served as the pilot on two missions and the commander on another. And before that, she was the third woman to graduate from the U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School. She's a trailblazer, a visionary, and a remarkable NASA Deputy Administrator. She, along with Bob Cabana, are great co-leaders with me as we try to forge a path in the future. Please give a warm welcome to Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy. This is so awesome. Congratulations. I'll tell you what's overwhelming is just uh, how, it, how many memories it brings back. So I'll tell you a story. 27 years ago tomorrow, I got the phone call. And uh, I was a test pilot at Edwards Air Force Base. I was finishing up my breakfast in the kitchen, and I got a phone call from astronaut Dave Leastma, who was then the head of FCOD. And uh, I, I couldn't believe it, my heart was pounding, I was really excited, and then I had to go to work. But the last thing Dave said to me is, and you can't tell anyone until we do, do the big thing. So I went, okay, can't tell anybody, can't tell anybody. I walked into my squadron and all of my test pilot colleagues took one look at me and said, you got the phone call. I'm like thinking to my, I'm fired already. <laughs> uh, I said, no, 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 no. And they said, no, you, you, can't, you can't hide it. Your face is lit up like a candle. And I think I know that you will all remember that phone call. And here's how I know. My ASCAN class, 1995, when we were trying to master the intricacies of the space shuttle, particularly the propulsion system, and we started to get maybe a little discouraged, what we would do is we would all go together over to Space Center Houston and there was a movie called To Be an Astronaut and it basically was the whole journey. It was from the phone call all the way through training to flying in space and it just lifted our spirits and always made us remember that phone call was the beginning of the journey. So I know you're going to remember that moment too. It was an extraordinary experience to be a part of that generation of astronauts. My generation built the International Space Station, and that was a remarkable achievement and an amazing set of challenges. But I also want to point out that at that time, there were two human space, uh, spacecraft in the world, the Space Shuttle and the Soyuz, and that was it. In the last decade, thanks to NASA's previous investments, but also nurturing and sponsoring of American industry, now the envy of the world, we have multiple human spacecraft. So it's never been a more exciting time to embark on your career. And Artemis, that is so exciting. We cannot wait to see that first human capable deep space craft since Apollo go on its maiden test voyage next year. But I just want to tell you that we're not going to rest on the laurel, laurels of the last decade. The administrator, the associate administrator, myself, all the senior leadership of the agency is very focused on building a blueprint for how we will explore with humans, not just to the moon, not just onto Mars, but figuring out the blueprint for how we're going to go into the solar system. That is what we are focused on right now. We're gonna practice on the moon, we're gonna learn, and we're gonna push out. And that will be your generation. And I am so excited 
Congratulations. I can't wait to support you and cheer you on in your journey. And now I'd like to introduce our associate administrator, my former boss as the chief of the astronaut office, former Kennedy Space Director, Bob Cabana. Thank you, Pam. It is uh, great to be home in Houston, and it's really great to be here at Aircraft Operations, where the finest aircraft maintainers in the world work. And I gotta say, I do miss flying those sleek little jets that are behind us. Uh, I, I can't believe it's been 36 years since I was where you guys are, uh, and all my NASA career was in front of me. It, it was absolutely amazing. And I just got to say congratulations to all of you. You know, when I think of what I went through and where you guys are now, it, it's just every, the world is in front of you. I am so glad I got selected when I did because I'm not sure I'd have been competitive competing against all of you. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I'm really envious of what lies in front of you. You know, as we, re we return to the moon in a sustainable way, paving the way towards Mars, we're gonna establish a presence in our solar system beyond our home planet, and you guys are the ones who are gonna get to do that. I, th I think it's absolutely awesome. When I think back to uh, my astronaut candidate year, one of the things that impressed me the most about it, that I enjoyed the most, it was the camaraderie of my class and, and the teamwork. And it, it was the people that we got to work with. I mean, w when I had a question, I mean, my background was engineering and flying and being a test pilot, but I was working with PhDs in, in physics and astrophysics and oceanography and, and that intermingling of thought and diversity was just absolutely outstanding. I was trained in geology by Dr. Bill Maltberger, who, who trained the Apollo astronauts in geology. And I just, I really enjoyed that. You, you are just gonna have a great time and the only thing that's going to top it is when you get that first space flight, and that is going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, I was uh, I was talking to uh, Bob Benkin, who was uh, chief of the astronaut office not too long ago, before this all started, and I said, Bob, you know, he asked me how my job was going, and I said, I absolutely love it, Bob, uh, working with. Senator Nelson and Pam is absolutely amazing. This is a critical time for our nation's space program. I said, but you know, I have not worked this hard or put this many hours in since I was chief of the astronaut office. And, and Bob can appreciate that. And so could the next person who I'm gonna introduce. That was probably one of the most challenging jobs I had in my NASA career. And it's my pleasure now to introduce the current chief of the astronaut office, uh, a distinguished naval aviator, test pilot, uh, flew in space for six months on Expedition 41, led two spacewalks. He's an outstanding leader, a really nice guy, and my friend, Reed Wiseman. All right, so there's some prepared words here, and I'm not going to read any of them. Um, sitting before us, we have 10 Americans, 10 of our nation's absolute finest. And uh, you have got a huge, huge next few years of work ahead of you, and it's going to be absolutely awesome. Last night, I got to meet uh, most of the family members of these folks, and I recognize very, very quickly, very quickly, they have all worked hard, but they have been raised well, and they have been supported well. So I want to take a second to thank all their parents, their brothers, their sisters, their moms, their dads. I want to thank their spouses, their children. I want to thank the uncle who stepped in and took over when, when he knew it was necessary. Like these people, these families, getting to meet and interact with them, it warms your heart. You know why our nation is good and you know why they were selected. So I think we're just going to take a, a few quick minutes because I want to hear from them. So we're going to start with, uh, start with Jessica. And, uh, and you know, before, Jessica, before I let you go, I, I do want to echo one thing that pretty much everyone has said. We are in the golden age right now of human spaceflight. We have private missions going out into low Earth orbit. We have the International Space Station conducting research, trying to better life here on Earth. We have the Artemis program going to the moon and then on to Mars. This right now, just take a step back with these explorers up here and recognize this right now is the golden age of human spaceflight. 
And with that, Jessica, uh, when did you first become interested in being an astronaut? Yes, so I first became interested in becoming an astronaut uh, at a very, uh, very early age. I was that uh, little girl in school who would play with rockets at the park by the house and uh, love science class. Um, I, I, I love to learn why and how things worked the way that they worked. I became a mechanic uh, in an earlier life. And uh, when I found out that there was a profession that combined all of these things, I, uh, I was hooked. So I was hooked uh, right from the get-go. Um, every step of my career from then on out uh, had this goal in mind of standing here today as a NASA astronaut candidate with uh, all of my teammates. I'm extremely excited to be part of this team, very honored uh, to be standing up here today, and, uh, and I'm really excited for all the things that NASA has planned for us in the future. All right, thank you. When you get on this space station, you will know those mechanic skills will come in very handy every single day in our orbiting uh, platform up there. Uh, Denise, who inspires you? All right, y'all, my mom is in the audience, <laughs> so I'm going to put her on the spot. Yes. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so her childhood dream was to be a military officer. Well, for, at the time, uh, in Turkey, it was not allowed for women. So as a little girl, I got to watch my mom graduate college. I got to watch her commission as an officer in the United States Air Force. Uh, she taught me how to dream big, and as long as you stay the course, you can achieve anything. Um, that's what inspired me not to give up on my own childhood dream of becoming a NASA astronaut. Thank you. That is... That's awesome, Denise. Thank you. Uh, Chris, uh, what were you doing before you got selected as an astronaut? Yeah, uh, so uh, before I got selected as a NASA astronaut, I was working as a medical physicist uh, at the Brigham and Women's Hospital and Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. And what that means is I was sort of splitting my time between uh, helping to research better ways we can target radiation therapy for cancer, and then actually working as part of a team, a multidisciplinary team, to, to, to treat patients. And so while it's a little bit bittersweet to leave the incredible team that I, I worked with at the hospital, I'm just honored and, uh, and, and incredibly excited to join the NASA team and these wonderful people to, to push human spaceflight forward. I think Pam was safe, but you and I were definitely in jeopardy if we were applying. Uh, all right, uh, Christina, what would you say to young people who are interested in following in your footsteps? Well, as you can see from my incredible classmates seated here beside me, there's really no one path to becoming a NASA astronaut candidate. And, you know, you might think that, that my path as a bioengineer and a cyclist is a little bit out there, but it was really all of those skills that I gained from those experiences that helped me get here. And so I think my, my advice would be to find something that you're really interested in, really curious about, passionate about, and explore that deeply. And I think if you approach every day trying to do the little things well, they will add up to something really big. And that might be sitting here someday as a NASA astronaut candidate. All right, Jack, what excites you uh, about human spaceflight right now? It's kind of a tough question to answer because uh, there's so much that's exciting about human spaceflight right now. As everyone has mentioned so far, there's commercial spaceflight going on, commercial space exploration, NASA's Artemis program is going on, potentially go to the moon and then on to Mars. There's just so much that's going on right now that's just so very exciting. I just, I can't put my finger on one thing. I'm excited about it all. I'm excited about the speed that it's happening at. Who knows where we're going to be in 5, 10, or 15 years because technology is changing so quickly. There's so much support for the space program out there uh, right now that uh, we really can do anything in the amount of time that we have. And I'm just so excited uh, with all my astronaut candidate uh, colleagues uh, to work with you guys uh, to do uh, have this adventure and see where manned space flight, human space flight will take us. Thanks. All right, before I ask Andre this question, I got to meet his dad last night. If anybody needs a new best friend, please find, uh, on, please, please find Andre's dad. He is just a great man. I could talk to him forever. All right, Andre, uh, sorry to put you on the spot. Uh, what does it mean to be a NASA astronaut? So a NASA astronaut is not afraid of challenges or solving complex problems. 
They're explorers that are ready to unlock the secrets of our universe for the betterment of humankind. But most importantly, they are team players that collaborate with contractors, people, organizations, and international partners to further the benefit of space exploration. Awesome. All right, Nicole, with the biggest fan club out there, what, what aspect of training are you looking forward to? As you can uh, see, the common theme is uh, being part of a team, so I cannot wait to get to know my new team members. Um, you know, I wouldn't be up here today and I wouldn't be where I am without the teammates who have stood next to me throughout all of it, uh, you know, to include my college volleyball teammates who are here in the stands. Um, yeah, but the, uh, the F-22 pilot in me has to say flying, I think, learning the T-38 again, and not only just flying, but getting to share my love of flying with my classmates, and then also getting to learn them as we fly together and getting to know each other. Um, I can't wait to get to know everybody and start to learn all the different aspects of spaceflight and how us as the NASA, NASA astronaut candidates are going to further human spaceflight. Marcos, what, what future missions are you most excited about uh, and why? So uh, any mission that I can be assigned to? Can Perfect I? Perfect answer. Perfect answer. Can I uh, hold you to what I'm about to say? Absolutely. All right, so maybe. So I know I have uh, two brothers in the audience who are probably thinking, uh, so you're telling me there's a chance here. So I, I like it. So I'm going to go big here. I think it would be great if NASA could scale up the Ingenuity helicopter that's currently flying on Mars to maybe you know, fit two people. I know Denise, the other helicopter pilot here, and I would love to take it for a spin for science. You know, yeah. but... All right, you can definitely hold me to that, and I will ride with you anytime. Uh, uh, Luke, you come to us from NASA Langley. Can you talk a little bit about your work there and how it's helping our NASA missions? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, since checking in over at NASA Langley, they've been doing all kinds of activities. We got advancement for aviation safety, uh, space technology development, and a lot of atmospheric science work, a lot of research going on. Um, just taking apart in some of those airborne science missions, modifying aircraft with specialized sensors and instruments, going out there collecting atmospheric data at all regions and, and levels of the atmosphere. Um, ultimately, that data is being gathered, and it's going to inform decisions on, on climate change, uh, the environment, and a better understanding of the planet. So going from that Earth science mission, coming over to the space mission with this team, just an incredible experience. Thank you. All right, Anil, our doctor in the group, tell us about the future of space medicine. Future of space medicine. Let's see. Uh, future of space medicine is really exciting, and what I'm excited about is all the opportunities uh, that are rapidly expanding. I got my start here at, at NASA at Johnson Space Center as a flight doctor, and there was 10, 20 doctors at that time point. And then there was one spot that opened up at a commercial partner, and I was lucky enough to work there. Uh, that was three years ago. In those three years, I've seen medical students, residents, paramedics, physician's assistants all get opportunities, and those are jobs working in commercial space, working with NASA, taking care of astronauts. Um, so as a, as a future NASA astronaut, I'm really excited to practice medicine in space, share it with those communities and those people. But if I was looking at a career in medicine right now, I would be so excited, I would jump at it, and I'd seriously consider space medicine because the opportunities are just limitless. And, and uh, cue the thunder, please. Yes. <laughs> All right. So for the kids that are out there watching, you get asked the question all the time, how can I become a, a NASA astronaut? How can I go do this? How can I explore space? And if you're a kid growing up in America, the decision is easy. Find something that you're passionate about and go do it. It's as simple as that. We have doctors, researchers, engineers, scientists, school teachers, pilots, uh, it, you name it. That is what a NASA astronaut is, a team player who is dedicated to improving life for every citizen of our nation and our world. With that, I'm going to hand it back over to Vanessa Weish.
Thank you, Reed. And I want to echo uh, what Bob Cabana said earlier. Reed Wiseman is uh, just an astronaut's astronaut, and I want to thank him for helping us select this very fine astronaut candidate class. You guys are so very awesome. And I also want to thank all of you here that joined us today, uh, the NASA team that makes us be so successful. Um, we're just doing such great things, and I want to thank you for that. I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, this is a great and exciting day for our nation, a very exciting day for NASA. And so I would like for our candidates to please stand one more time so they can get a huge round of applause.